To drill handle holes, we use this True Position brand jig. It is very versatile and makes the process quick, easy, and accurate. It is also, however, rather delicate and expensive, so please take care when using it and keep it well protected and clean. The first thing we want to do is figure out the hole to hole spacing of the handle in question. This is different from the overall length of the handle. If you have the original packaging, you can just read the spacing off of that. But if not, simply measure from the middle of one hole to the next. The most common spacings are 96 and 128 millimeters. This example is 128. Next, we need to adjust the two sliders to match the hole spacing of the handle. To do this, Divide the total spacing in half and set each slider to the answer. In this example, 128 divided by 2 is 64, so I will adjust each slider along the ruler to 64 millimeters, and then tighten the knobs. Note that I am paying attention to the white line in the middle of the slider, not the edge of the slider. It's a good idea to double check against one of the handles first. I know the wide angle lens of the camera makes it look like they don't line up, but trust me, they do. Normally, you would start by asking the client where they prefer the handles to be positioned. The project manager or team leader should be doing this. For my example, I'm using my apartment's cabinets, so I will match the position to the existing holes. In this case, the measurements were 45 millimeters from the side and 58 millimeters from the bottom. Note that this is to the center of each hole, not the side or bottom of the handle itself. This big slider here is the side stopper, so we can start with that. Simply set the flat side of the stopper on the right here to 45 millimeters. This slider over here is for the bottom stopper. To do this one, we need to add the measurement from the bottom, which is 58 millimeters, to half of the handle hole spacing, which is 64 millimeters. 64 plus 58 is is 122 millimeters. So we want to set the slider to 122. Note that we set this left side of the slider, which corresponds to the front face of this part that sticks out, to 122 millimeters. For all the sliders, make sure the screw is secured firmly. Before we move on with the demonstration, let's take a look at a common handle placement and how to measure for it. With doors with a style like this, Clients will often want the handle positioned right in the middle of this section of the door here. To do this, we want to start by measuring the width of that section. I measure off of the 10 millimeter mark rather than the zero for more accuracy. Here we have 46 millimeters. We want to divide that by two, which equals 23 millimeters. I have seen beginners make the mistake of then setting the jig to 23 millimeters. If you do that, you will end up placing the handle here, which is off center, and we will have to redo the doors. To get it right, you want to measure this distance here, which is six millimeters and add the six to the 23 to get 29 millimeters and set the side of the jig to 29 millimeters to get the right placement like that. Now let's go back to our main demonstration. I'm checking the jig to see how accurate the existing holes were in my kitchen. Make sure to press the jig all the way to the left and all the way up. It may be hard for you to see, but the top hole lines up perfectly, yet the bottom one is off by a few millimeters to the left. The original installer of my kitchen seems to have not done a very good job. Thankfully, he does not work for our company. Imagine for a moment that there are no holes in this door and I am drilling fresh new holes. Simply hold the jig up pressing firmly in both directions and pin it tightly to the door with one hand. Making sure it doesn't slip, drill through the jig and into the door with your free hand. It really is as simple as that. Now let's go over a few tips and tricks for better results. One of the great features of this system 
is that you don't need to change your settings for left and right doors. You can just flip the jig upside down like this and drill the opposite door. Something I've noticed when using this jig is that if you try to drill all the way through in one go, the drill will jam up since it can't clear the sawdust through the hole in the jig easily. To get around this, I like to only drill a couple millimeters at first, then remove the jig and go all the way through. If you're a beginner, this method also gives your team leader a chance to check over your work before you drill all the way through the door. That way, if you did end up making a mistake, only the fronts of the doors need to be repaired and resprayed rather than both sides. Small drawers such as this one are basically the same as doing a door, if not easier. To set the handle to the center of the face, measure the width of the drawer face and divide by two and set the small stopper to the answer. Then measure the height of the face, also divide by two and set the large stopper to that. Then drill the same as before. You can hang the jig off the top of the face like this to make things easier. Once again, notice how I start by making only an indentation a couple millimeters deep. Then I double check my work real quick by measuring the holes to make sure it's consistent on all sides. Another trick I like to use is I first drill the indentation in all the drawers or doors. Then I go back and do them all in a row all the way. This assembly line style of working is fast and efficient and lets you get into a rhythm so you make less mistakes too. If the drawer is any wider than the example just shown, we will need to use the extension. To do this, start by removing the small stopper and replacing it with this piece. Secure the piece at exactly 5 inches. Then add the extension ruler and secure that at exactly 5 inches as well. We can then add the small stopper to the end and position it wherever needed. Our jig just became a lot bigger and more versatile. It is important to line up both ends at the 5 inch mark accurately so that the ruler runs continuously from 0 in the center all the way to 22 inches at the end. The bottom stopper and the handle hole sliders are still used like normal. Another use for this jig is centering knobs. Since knobs only have one hole, we can remove these two pieces and use this single hole in the center of the jig. Set the stopper on the extension to half the width of the drawer face. Let us see a demonstration of the jig with the extension attached. Since this drawer is right beside a wall, I can't use the jig upside down like I prefer to, so I'm doing it from the bottom. The rest of the process is exactly the same as normal. One last example, we'll be doing large doors such as this one, which we do encounter on occasion. First, the team leader or project manager will establish the height of the handle, or in this case the knob, with the client and measure up from the floor. Place a piece of painter's tape beside the spot and mark the height. The side measurement is measured like normal and set using the large stopper on the jig. Since this is a tall door, we won't be using the small stopper, and since this example is a knob, we won't need these two sliders as well. Pay attention to the white line in the middle of the jig at the zero mark. This is what we will be referencing. Simply line up the white line with the pencil mark we already made and drill your hole. It's as easy as that. This method works the same way with handles and can even be used horizontally on very large drawers that are even wider than the extension ruler. Let us take a moment to discuss the actual technique when it comes to drilling holes. In the video on how to use a drill, I said that a drill driver is always better for drilling holes than an impact driver. To put it briefly, the driver will provide smoother torque and better trigger control of your speed 
which is optimal for making holes. You should also be setting your drill to the icon showing a drill bit, as shown here. Most drivers will also have two speeds. The slow speed might be better if you are a beginner. The first thing you should know is always drill from the front to the back, no exceptions. The front of the hole is always cleaner than the back. The second thing to know is that you do not want to blow through the holes quickly like this. This will cause the back to break out, especially with MDF doors, and leave an ugly scar. Rather, start quickly, but exit the door slowly and smoothly without too much pressure, like shown in these examples. This will give you a much better result. It is also very important to keep the drill bit level without angling up and down or side to side. You want to go straight in. Also, you want to make sure you go back in the end and vacuum out the insides of the drawers and cabinets to remove any sawdust. You also want to try and remember how the things went back in place as accurately as possible to keep the clients happy. One final thing to be aware of is keeping the jig accurate. This large stopper can sometimes become not parallel to the main ruler, causing a handle to go on crooked. This should be checked every once in a while or if you drop the jig. To check, set the stopper to 1mm and compare it to the ruler. Here it seems pretty good. If it is not parallel though, we will need to adjust it using these two little screws here and an allen key. You can tighten the bottom screw to lift the right side of the stopper up, or you can tighten the top screw to lower it down. Play with the two screws until the stopper is perfectly parallel.